France, late 18th century. The country is in the middle of the bloodiest revolution that the world has ever seen. There is neither law nor order, and the military is in shambles. While the country tears itself apart, foreign nations are taking advantage of the chaos to stop the revolution before it can spread to their countries. Only a handful of men that are brave enough to stand tall can save France from its enemies and from itself, although one man stands out among the rest, a man that took a stand in history as to save France and the French Revolution itself. This is Francois Christophe Kellerman. Francois Christophe Kellerman was born to Francois Kellerman and Marie von Dern on May 28th, 1735 in Strasbourg, France. He was an only child. In 1752, once Kellerman became 17, he became a cadet volunteer in the French military. By 1756, the Seven Years' War began and Kellerman was thrown right into the fight. The Seven Years' War was France and Russia fighting against Britain and Prussia. Their go goal was global dominance in the colonies like North America and India. In 1761, five years after the war began, Kellerman was promoted to captain after capturing General Scheider and 300 enemy Prussian soldiers. For his service, Kellerman was also awarded the Cross of St. Louis. Despite his services, Britain reigned victorious when the Seven Years' War came to a close in 1763. In 1769, Kellerman married his wife, Marie Ann Kellerman. A year later, on August 4th, 1770, his fr son, Francois Etienne Kellerman, was born. Kellerman continued to serve in the military, and because of that, he was promoted to general in 1784, and four years later, he was promoted to field marshal. He held the title of field marshal when the turning point for France began the following year. The French Revolution began in 1789 and took a great inspiration from the American Revolution. France was on the edge of bankruptcy because of, the, of France's pricey involvement in the American Revolution and due to King Louis' predecessor's wasteful spendings. A period of poor harvests, drought, cattle diseases, and rising prices of bread led to discontent among the peasants and the poor, and soon they began to revolt. Also, there was a strong movement at the time to abolish feudalism, which was a social system in medieval Europe where the nobility had most of the power and will stay that way while the peasants remained poor. The people of France wanted a republic instead of a monarchy, seeing that the king, the church, and the aristocrats held more power than everyone else. In the Senate alone, the aristocratic members of the Senate, only 2%, could outvote the non-aristocratics, the main 98%. In 1790, the Lyon Uprising occurred where anti-revolutionary forces revolted outside the National Convention against the new revolutionary government. Field Marshal Kellerman was sent to the end of the uprising, and so he did. He calmed the situation, and right after the surrender of the protesters, Kellerman himself was arrested under suspicion of being an aristocrat. He was held in prison for 13 months before being released and reinstated to his military position. Countries throughout Europe were highly concerned by the French Revolution, as they feared that the same patriotic anthem would spread to their countries and their own monarchies would also collapse. They were right to be afraid, as revolutionaries in France wanted war to be declared on Austria under hopes that it would unite the country, France's borders could be expanded, and they generally wanted the revolution to spread to other countries. On April 20th, 1792, the Legislative Assembly formed only a year before declared war on Austria. This became to be known as the War of the First Coalition. French forces went, even went on to invade Belgium, which at the time was controlled by Austria, but they were easily repelled by the Austrian military. On September 20th, 1792, Francois Kellerman took part in perhaps the most important battle of the French Revolution, the Battle of Valmy. Duke Brunswick led the Prussian troops through France with the intentions of marching on Paris and burning it to the ground. The French army at this time was in shambles and full of cowards. Many French forces had broken rank and fled at just seeing the Prussian forces. 
Luckily, General Dumarez, who had been marching on the Austrian Netherlands, had abandoned his advance to secure the city of Valmy against Duke Brunswick's advance. At the same time, General Kellerman was also commanded to regroup with Dumarez at Valmy to stop the Prussian advance. Kellerman, being an older veteran, was not a fan of the new Army of France. 19 of his 23 battalions in this Army of the Centra was from the old army. Together, General Kellerman and General Dumarez's forces totaled to 54,000 soldiers. Duke Brunswick's army consisted of 84,000 Prussians, Austrians, Hessians, and French Royalists. Clearly, Kellerman and his forces were outnumbered, and it was expected that they would not survive the onslaught. But still, Kellerman and Dumarez stood tall, prepared to die to save Paris, France itself, and the revolution. Once the battle commenced, Kellerman's forces were quickly surrounded and they had to regroup at a nearby windmill. Here they planned their strategy, set up their artillery, and pledged to stop the enemy. During the battle, a Prussian artillery shell landed behind the French troops and they began to break rank and run in fear. Right then, Francois Kellerman rode up on his horse, inspiring the troops with his presence. He chanted, Viva la Nation, which was also chanted by his troops and re-inspired morale. The French suffered 300 casualties compared to the Prussians' 184 losses. Surprisingly, Duke Brunswick broke from the field and his forces began an immediate eastward retreat. From this battle, Paris was saved and the revolution was allowed to continue on in France. Johann Wolfgang von Gaelth, a German writer and poet who fought alongside the Prussians, wrote, From this place and this day, Fourth commences a new era in world history. Napoleon Bonaparte had even stated, I believe that I am the greatest general that ever lived, but I daren't take post on that ridge with windmill at Valmy in 1793. It just so happens that on the same day as the Battle of Valmy, September 20th, 1792, the French First Republic was declared, which marked the end of the French monarchy. King Louis was also condemned for committing the crime of treason once it was revealed that he collaborated with foreign nations and tried to stop the rebellion. In sight of these crimes, the king was executed on January 21st, 1793. Afterwards, Kellerman went to defend the southeastern border of France against further Austrian invasions. In November 1792, Francois Kellerman was appointed as the commander of the Army of the Alps. Throughout this time, Kellerman went on to serve alongside Napoleon Bonaparte in the invasion of Italy and the Papal States. After his military career, he went on to become a senator in 1800, and was later given the honorary title of Marshal of France in 1804. He was also named the Duke of Valmy in 1808. Afterwards, he went on to be the commander of the reserves and assigned to train soldiers. He retired at the age of 80. Kellerman's son, Francois Etienne Kellerman, went on to serve in the Napoleonic Wars following in his father's footsteps. Even through death, Francois Kellerman is remembered as an honorary hero of France. A monument was built of him at Valmy and his name is inscribed on the Arc de Triomphe's third column. Kellerman was buried in the Père Lachaise Cemetery in Paris, while his heart was commanded to be buried at Valmy alongside his brave soldiers. Although Francois Kellerman is hardly ever remembered as a highly influential person of the French Revolution, his contributions and his role in the Battle of Valmy forever changed the role of history. On his monument at Valmy is written, Here lie the soldiers who gloriously died and who saved France on September 20th 1792. Marshal Kellerman, the Duke of Valmy, the soldier who had the honor to command them on that memorable day, 28 years later, making his last request, desired that his heart should be placed among them. <laughs>